Okay, um, lecture 10, halogenated alkanes. Just looking for my pen here. Okay, um, know those terms. First question is, what are the three different names that can be given to an alkane that has one or more halogen atoms attached to it? Well, we know halogenated alkanes. That's one. Then we have halo or halo alkanes. Second, and then we have alkyl halides. The reason I point this out at all is that that's organic chemistry through and through. There always seems to be at least two or three different names for everything. All these basic, uh, so why, why can't they just pick one name? Well, organic chemistry is a very old part of chemistry. It's been studied to death and people were studying it in several different countries at once and no one was really no noticing what the others were doing. So a lot of different names. They've tried to get them under control, but still they, they exist. So just to let you know. Okay, provide the corresponding name or structure to each of the following. So look at the end here. Going from the name to the structure is still easy even though we have uh, halogens attached. That, that's chloro, so that's a chlorine. One, two, three, four. So chloro means chlorine, uh, so put a chlorine on there. And that bond means it goes directly to chlorine. It's a line angle, so it kind of looks like it's a methyl group with a chlorine on top. No, when you have that bond to something, if, it, if it's on its own, so we can do it here. So if it's just like that, that's a methyl group. But when there's a chlorine on it, it's not a methyl topped with a chlorine, it's just chlorine. It's a bond to chlorine. Same thing here. I'm going to put a, uh, a dot on each of the carbons. There's no other carbons here. Each of those bonds ends with a halogen, and a halogen alone. So we see that we have six carbons, so that's hexane. Uh, we see that we number from this side because we meet up with the chlorine first, and carbon two from this side we wouldn't meet up with the bromines until one, two, three, four. So, but the bromine comes first, and the alphabet, the B comes first, so three, three, di, bromo, uh, two chloro. Make sure you change. Uh, you know, it has to be bromo, not bromine. Bromo and chloro. And I said what? Hexane. And there we go. Take a look here. One, three, five. Try bromo. So we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. Okay. That's decane. Now uh, for bromine. We, uh, we have one bromine at number one. Now, I did this because I want to show this is carbon one and has a bromine attached to it. And you got to be careful because uh, from this point on, it's tough to uh, count. You might want to count that bromine as part of the chain. It's not carbon, so it doesn't get counted. So you want to start counting at this dot, at the first carbon. So one, two, three, four, five. See it all the time on the exams. So uh, one, two, and then we have fluorine here, three, four, another fluorine here, five, six, another fluorine here, and then methyl groups. So if you have, uh, be, if we had, uh, we couldn't have one methyl because the methyl on a carbon one would just extend the chain. It would no longer be 10 carbons, it'd be 11, which would be undecane. But anyway, uh, but if you have a bromine or fluorine or chlorine attached to the carbon one, that doesn't extend the chain because it's not carbon, it just, but, and that's why we can have, uh, we can label the bromine as being on one. Okay, so we have these guys here. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You can see bromine comes first uh, on this side, or we meet up with a bromine first before we meet up with fluorine. So the labeling would be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So it'd be two bromo. And then, oh, there's four fluorine, so it's tetrafluoro. So we have five, five, six, six, tetra, fl uh, tetra fluoro. Don't see tetra very much. Floral nonane. And let me just, because of that, it kind of caught me off guard. Let me make sure we have nine carbons. We have four fluorines, so tetrafluoro. We have at five, five, six, six, two bromo. Yep, everything's there. Good. Now we have two, two dibromo, one, one tri dichloro, four isopropyl nonane. Blah, a lot going on here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 
we have the chlorines on the end here so we have a chlorine and then a chlorine and then bromine and a bromine one two three four and then this is uh, isopropyl and uh, I'm going to add a carbon here on this side I think that's the best thing uh, for what I'm just looking at so that's isopropyl that's everybody notice it looks like that chlorine has extended the chain it hasn't that's your last carbon so it's still one two three four five six seven eight nine everything's there now let's look at this guy I added that extra carbon on one two three four five six seven one two three four five six seven eight yeah and I did that just uh, to make sure that there is no other way of naming this but without the other carbon, you'd see that we could we could go along here. But I wanted this to stick out as T-butyl, and there's no other way of naming it. Uh, we have to start from this end. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So one, two, three, four, five. And with the numbering, I still urge you to do it, but you don't have to label every carbon. Uh, what I'll see. What I did was just label the substituents. One, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight. I usually put it at the end too. So, if it's a decane you're dealing with and you only have two substituents, there's no reason to draw everything out. So it would be um, two, or put all the numbers in. I should say di. Oh, that's crappy. I got these wires all over the place here. Hold on. Okay, got put right down at the end. So we have two, four, dichloro, five. T butyl uh, octane. Just like that. All right. Next one. 135 tribromo 4 methyl cycloheptane. Oh, heptane. That's great. One, two. Just, I'm going to put dots because I didn't do the greatest job in the world. There are the seven carbons. Um, make this a bromine here. One, two, three. This is a bromine. Four, five. This is a bromine. And then this must be the methyl group here. For four. Now, when we get to naming cycloalkanes, well, this is cyclohexane. Now, which one do we choose? Well, there's only two substituents. We go alphabetically. One, two, three. This is the only way that we could do it. So it's going to be one bromo, three chloro. So when you have two substituents, it's really easy. It's You just go alphabetically. If they're both the same, uh, then just make sure you have the lowest numbers. Now if we have three here, let me double check. Every time I say, oh, it's really easy, that means I've made a mistake. It is easy, but I just kind of glossed over. Let me make sure, yeah, everything looks good. Okay, now, uh, cyclopentane. And we can number from this side. These three are next to each other, so it's got to be one, two, three, or one, two, three. This is chloral, this is methyl, so it should be one, two, three. So we will call this one, uh, one, two, dichloro, three, methyl, cyclopentane. And there you go. Oops, make sure that's on there. There we are.